want to show you how to compute portfolio variance in Excel. And I want to show you two different approaches. Each has a somewhat different interpretation, although you get exactly the same number when you do the calculation. So normally, and I'm going to illustrate this with a three security portfolio. Now, normally we write portfolio variance like this. Um, the, ver uh, the percentage that we put in the first security or the weight we put in the first security squared times the variance of the first plus the weight in the second security squared times the variance of the second, etc. And then we have these covariance terms, two times the weight in the first times the weight in the second times the covariance between the first and the second plus two times the weight in the first times the weight in the third times the covariance between the first and the third, etc. Now, we oftentimes will do this using um, matrix algebra. So in this case, let's define W as a vector of weights, W1, W2, and W3, and K as the variance-covariance matrix. So the variance-covariance matrix has variances along the diagonal, and in the off-diagonal terms, these are the covariances. So this corresponds to the first security and the first security. So the first row and uh, first column and row so correspond to the first security. So the covariance with itself is just the variance. The off diagonal items have, you know, the covariance between the first and the second security. And it's symmetric because the covariance between the first and the second is the same as the covariance between the second and the first. So if you want to define the portfolio variance, you could use matrix multiplication where the variance of the portfolio equals this vector here transposed times the variance covariance matrix times this um, vector again in this format. So you don't have to transpose it. And you can see you're doing W twice, so you're going to get, you know, W1 squared, and you're also going to get W1 times W2, etc. For those of you who aren't in love with matrix, you know, notation, you can also do this with summation notation. You have two summations, J equals 1 um, to N, and I equals 1 to N. So you start this counter first. You make this a 1, and you start this one with 1. So you have... 1, 1, so W1 times W1 is W1 squared, and the covariance with itself, 1 and 1, is the variance, so you get the first term. And then you change this counter to 2, leaving this at 1, so this would be W1 times W2 times the covariance between 1 and 2. And you're actually going to get two of these, because when you have this at 2 and this one at 1, you'll get the same thing. That's why there are two terms here. So this is the standard way it's written. And the standard interpretation is, is that here you have some sort of contribution um, to the portfolio variance by each individual security's risk. And then over here with the covariance terms, you have the diversification benefit. Right? How are these securities related to one another? Do they move together? Do they move in different directions, etc.? So, and actually, as you increase the number of securities in the portfolio, you increase the number of covariance terms proportionately faster. So that's the idea of uh, diversifying a portfolio. So a second approach we can take is to avoid the matrix algebra. Not everybody's familiar with matrix algebra, and even those who have taken it, if you don't use it all the time, um, it's a little bit tedious. And we'll do it using matrix algebra in Excel, but there, there's another way to interpret it as well. So here, I'm going to say, let's take the second approach, and what we're going to do is figure out the contribution of each security to total portfolio variance. And I can write it this way. I can bring out one of these W's out into the other summation. So here I have J equals 1, um, I equals 1. So when this is 1 and this is 1, I get W1 times W1 times 
the covariance between one with itself, which is the variance term. So I get that first term. And then if I keep this at one and change this to two, I get W1 times W2 times the covariance between one and two, etc. And if you work this out, it comes out to exactly the same thing we had before, but it's written a little differently and you have a little different interpretation if you write it this way. Here we have the variance um, times the weight in the first security, so the variance of the first security times the weight in the first security squared plus W1 times W2 times the covariance between 1 and 2 and then plus W1 times W3 times the covariance between 1 and 3. So these all have ones in them. So this is the contribution of the first security to total portfolio variance. These terms here all have twos in them. So this is going to be the contribution of the second security to total portfolio variance. And then down here, this is going to have be the contribution of the third security total portfolio variance. Now you may have noticed there's no two times here, but here we have, we notice that we have these terms, the variance terms with their weight squared is exactly the same as we had before. And you'll notice here I have W1 times W2 times sigma 1, 2, but that's also, that also impacts security 2's contribution. So I actually have two of these. Likewise, 1 and 3, I have 1 and 3 down here, so there's two of these. And then here I have um, 2 and 3 and 2 and 3, so that's the contribution. Um, that's the 2 times W2 times W3 times sigma 2, 3. So it's exactly the same equation as we had before, but the interpretation's a little different. This is the contribution to total variance of the first security includes its diversification benefit. This is a contribution of the second security and this is the contribution of the third. So let's try and do this in Excel and you'll do them a little differently. One way of doing it will be to use matrix algebra. Another way will be to sort of uh, use something called sum product in Excel to do the calculation. So I've actually got some return data here. I had downloaded the, um, the stock prices for Amazon, Google, and Tesla, and I converted them to returns. But just to make, keep this video a little shorter, I'm not going to discuss um, how you do that. You can watch one of the other videos where I've done um, similar calculations where I discuss that. So I need the variance covariance matrix, and I'm going to do that using this data analysis um, tool that will calculate the covariance for me. If you don't see it here when you go to the data tab, you can install it easily by hitting file, options, add-ins, and then down here click go for Excel add-ins and just make sure the analysis tool pack is clicked on. So now I'm going to go to the data analysis tool pack and I'm going to select covariance. There are a bunch of different things here, but I'm going to use covariance. I've used it before. And what you're going to do is you're going to highlight um, all the data you have. So these, the returns for these three securities, and you're going to tell it where you want to put it. So I've already done this, so I'll just leave it where it is. So let me hit OK. And I get this variance uh, covariance matrix. So let me just put some names in here. So I'm going to copy this, copy, and I'm going to put it up here because I'm going to put something else where it says column, and I'm going to put it here as well. And I'm going to say, make sure when I paste it, I'm going to say transpose. So it flips it over. Now, I need to fill in the rest of this variance covariance matrix. The reason they only give you, you know, the bottom part of it is because this is the same as this. So I can in fact just um, copy this here and in fact I could copy Tesla's Tesla with Amazon and Google right here and just copy and make sure that I hopefully remember to do um, transpose so it turns it from a row to a column 
Now let me make sure that I've done this correctly here. So this is symmetric, this is symmetric, this is symmetric. So it looks good. Looks good. So let's see. I want to put in some weights here. So I'm going to say 30%, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. And 45%. So I believe that adds up to 100%. So I want to again copy this. So a little trick here. And again, make sure that I transpose it. So I have the same weights there. And let's see if we can't calculate it in the two ways and see if we get the same result. Okay, so here I'm going to have, you know, approach one. And this is going to be the variance for the portfolio. And let's see if we can't calculate this by using the matrix multiplication approach. So I'm going to, and I have to actually use transpose since I ha have one of these um, written horizontally and one written um, vertically for the weight. So um, I can do the matrix multiplication this way. It's M. M-U-L-T, matrix multiplication, and I'm doing matrix multiplication twice, so I actually have to tell it this again, M-U-L-T, um, and I'm going to open that uh, parenthesis, and I'm going to say, all right, I want to multiply by this, by this, right, so this is the weight times the covariance matrix, and then I'm going to multiply it by the weight again, which is now in a column format, and I'm going to close up that parenthesis, and hopefully I've done this correctly, and I get an answer, 0 0.10859. All right, so that's the first approach, right, matrix multiplication, right, you know, W transpose times the you know, covariance, variance, covariance matrix times W, and that gives us the variance. Let's try approach two. So this is going to be a little bit different. It's going to do the same thing, but we're going to find the contribution of Amazon, of Google, and of Tesla to portfolio variance, and then we're going to add them up. So here's what we want to do. So I want to be right here, and so I'm going to take, I'm going to take this, so the weight in Amazon times, and I'm going to use a, something called sum product, and I'm going to say sum product of these weights, and I want to lock the weights because when I copy across, I want to make sure these weights stay here, and if you hit F4 in Windows, it'll actually lock the column and the and the um, row. We only really need to lock the column because we're not copying down. And then I'm going to tell it to multiply it by this first um, set of uh, variance and covariances with respect to Amazon. So let me see. I'll close that up. What some product does is it says multiply this first term times the first term in the second array, add it to the first, uh, the second um, term here times the second term in the second array, and then add it to this times this. And hopefully I did that correctly. Okay, it gives me kind of a big funny looking uh, format. So let me just, uh, let me just reduce that, uh, make it a number. And let me just give myself some numbers, I'll give it the same format as that. And now I can just copy over. This is locked. It'll then go to this and this column and this and this column. So this number here, let me just fix that format a little bit. This number here is Amazon's contribution to total portfolio variance. And I'm going to copy across and hopefully I did that correctly. And this is going to be Google's contribution to total portfolio variance, and this is going to be Tesla's. And if I've done this correctly, when I sum these up, I should get the same result as the portfolio variance here.
here. So let's see if I can do that. And let's sum this up. And sure enough, I do. I think I'm one decimal place short, so that's why it doesn't line up quite right. But there you go. It's exactly the same number. So two approaches, one using matrix algebra and one taking advantage of the sum product. But the advantage of doing the sum product is you get some different numbers here, some different interpretations. This is Amazon's contribution to total portfolio variance. This is Google's contribution. This is Tesla's. So the result is the same, but it gives you a little bit of a different interpretation. And the nice part about doing it with the second approach is that you don't have to use matrix multiplication, which um, I imagine a, a number of people are not familiar with, or for that matter, even if you're familiar with it, or don't use it enough to um, remember how to do it. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Thank you.